your child. Name it. Is it fear? Is it anxiety? Is it insecurity? Is it doubt? Perhaps your giant or your improbable feat is a better relationship, weight loss. What has been your obstacle, your challenge, your task? What is your giant? This is the last day you are going to allow this giant to defy you. I know it hasn't been easy. It's time to win. in your life there will be depression there will be anxiety there will be oppression there will be stress there will be overwhelm will you buckle under the pressure or will you rise to the occasion the Bible says that David got up and ran into the army of the Philistine he ran towards the battle and like an eagle is the only bird that flies into the storm. It is time for you to fly into the next dimension of where you have been called to. What is your dream? What is your idea? What is your assignment? There is a new breed of champions emerging out of the ashes of doubt and fear. Your knees may be knocking, your palms sweaty, but the time is now to rise up and run after it. Run after your dream. Run after your idea. Run after your goal. Run after it with everything that you have. You will never have your future until you are fully persuaded that you are a carrier of everything required to fulfill your destiny. If nobody believes in you, you gotta make it up in your mind that all you have is all you need. You are gonna need vision. Before you win, you're going to have to see it. I want you to see yourself winning. If you can see it, you can have it. The, what the Relentless System does, it's a mindset. Before you have an exceptional skill set, okay, you have to have the right mindset. The fighter jet mentality is that someone who is just determined, relentlessly obsessed in achieving an outcome in the face of all adversity. I've always had this relentless mentality, and if you say I can't do something, if I fail, if I, you know, mess up, it just motivates me even more. I just become even more hungry. You've got to start with that belief in your mind. I've got this. I can do this. I can conquer this. The relentless are unstoppable. I didn't want to have to say, I wish I would have done more. You gotta put yourself in that cage. I switch my mind to something else. I switch my mode into something else. It's go time. But the difference between me and most people is you might be sweeter than me. You might be bigger than me. You might grind. Listen to me, I don't know. You might have money. I don't know where you come from, but you will not outwork me. But when I'm in that cage, bro, don't touch me, don't talk to me. All in, emotionally and executionally, in theory and strategy and in execution. If you want something, you have got to be relentless. When you're sitting there, you're trying to sell your product, you're making phone calls, you're giving a lecture, whatever it may be, you're driving a bus, you're a doctor, whatever it may be, the stronger your mindset is, the greater your skill set is going to be. Make a declaration to yourself. 
declare all out war. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? They start their school on Monday morning watching me. They ain't got a daddy. Their daddy in jail. They don't have a brother. Their brother's in jail. They all I got. You don't understand. My son's at Michigan State, and I pay for it cash. My daughter wants to go to Harvard. You don't get it. My sister just had a baby, and she ain't making no money. A game, all I got is an A game. I ain't got a B game. I ain't got a C game. When I finish, people are relying on me. Some of y'all, when you get on the field, you forgot what it was like when you was hustling in high school playing ball, when you were in college hustling to get to this point. If you want something, you've got to be relentless. You've got to decide, I deserve this, and I'm going to have it. And you go all out to get it. Here's the deal, if you get to the top of the tree, all the fruit from the bottom at the top is going to be there, son. So I don't need you focusing on cars and money and stuff. You're going to get that. I need you to focus on why you were born in the first place. Why are you here on earth for this particular time? What are you doing here? You need to tell you that you owe you something. I don't want nothing from you but for you to leave this room and know what you want. What do you want in your marriage? What do you want with your son and your daughter? What do you want in your health? What do you want financially? Like, how much money do you want to make a year? What do you want to drive? How do you want to live? Stop just waking up like an accident. What do you want? And then once you find out what you want, spend the rest of your natural life waking up and going after it. The reason why I speak with so much passion E.T., why do you speak with so, uh, so much authority? Because I'm talking about my life, not something that I read. I ate out of trash cans. You ain't got to start with the two-parent background. You ain't got to start with wealth. You ain't got to start with your parents graduated. It's not the hand that you dealt. You got rich kids who own drugs. You got rich kids who committed suicide. You got rich kids who, who don't know their purpose in life. It's not the hand that you was dealt, baby. It's how you play your hand. Every opportunity is the last opportunity. Every opportunity, I have to reprove myself again. Every opportunity, I'm still nervous. E.T., you've been doing this for years. Why are you so nervous? Because the day you become content, the day you stop evaluating yourself, the day you stop growing, the day you stop getting better is the day you die. Is the day the person who's trying to catch you will get you. And I ain't where I want to be. And I'm like, God, I ain't where I want to be. And he was like, you stop being a victim. I said, what you mean a victim? Well, it ain't my fault my mom got pregnant at 17. It ain't my fault my daddy wasn't there. It ain't my fault they couldn't get along. It ain't my fault. He said, boy, you, you grown. You ain't 10 no more. You, you, the decisions you make right now is up to you. You crying about something that happened to you when you was a kid. You ain't even no kid no more. You a grown man. Take full ownership. The stupid stuff you doing, your parents didn't make you play no video games. What you crying about? So what your daddy wasn't there? Your mama ended up getting married. What you crying about? He went to work every day. He never beat you. He never abused you. Your mama did the best she knew how to do. What you crying about? You grew up in a house. What you crying about? You've been lazy your whole life and now somebody told you you could make six figures and you go knock on the door a hundred times and your body say you a lie. You ain't never gave a hundred percent. And in order to knock on the door a hundred times, you're going to have to get 120. Get up out of here. You can't do this. And you're going to have to fight and fight and fight and fight. And most of you won't be successful, not because you can't do it, but you can't outlast your old you long enough to get to your new new. Every day when I wake up, I got all kind of demands. You got all kind of demands. And the reason why you're not where you want to be is not because you're not great, but you taking all other people's stuff before you spend enough time with yourself to get to know you and get to know what you want and what you should do. And so please raise your hand with me if you're saying, E, from this day forward, I make a commitment to myself in a way I've never made a commitment to myself before. Let me see your hands. I said, I'm going to grind. I'm going to fight, I'm going to work, I'm going to press toward, I'm going to learn, I'm going to do everything in my power every single day. I'm going to do everything in my power to become a victor and not a victim. If you're going to defeat this giant, if you're going to win the war, it starts 
on the battlefield of your mind. This is where the war is won. Over the course of your life, you will discover that the obstacle is the way, that there is great counsel in conflict. We will discover that we are most creative in the midst of adversity. So do not run from your battle, for the battle is a learning experience. You gotta overcome fear. The moment that you overcome fear, then your opponent is bankrupt. There's nothing they can do. You're gonna to have to dispense with fear and with negative self-talk. Remember your why. It is the why that gets us to win. And it is the why that gives us the power to persevere through the how. Stop looking for the addition. Stop looking for the validation. Stop looking for everybody to agree with what you're about to do. Stop looking for everybody to understand and know this. All you have is all you need. I can see your giant of addiction running towards you with words of darkness, death, attempting to strike fear in your heart. Will you cower? Will you back down? Or will you run into battle? But I see a generation rising up against the one who called you powerless, rising up against the fiery darts of the enemy, rising up against the lie that have held us down far too long, rising up against the despair in the heaviness and the chronic anxiety. I have waited my whole life for this moment. Thank you to everybody that doubted me. Knees buckling, palms sweaty, heart heavy, but I'm ready. I'm afraid, but I'm running. You will hear my feet walk in the pavement. I'm no more complacent. He said everybody that doubted me. He said everybody that stopped believing in me. He said everybody that counted me out. What has been tested, what has been proven, do something with what's in your hand. Do what you can with what you have. All you have is all you need. It drives me crazy when people say they don't have enough time to go to the gym for 45 minutes a day and work out. Or to do something for 45 minutes to an hour a day to improve. If it is physically improve or if it is mentally to improve. Imagine you read one hour a day about history. How much you will learn after 365 hours in one year. Think about if you study about the history of musicians, of composers, how much you would know. Imagine if you would work on the business, on some business that you want to develop every day for an hour. Imagine how further along you will go and get. So it drives me nuts because we have, when people say we don't have the time, we have 24 hours a day. We sleep six hours a day, so it gives you still 18 hours. And there's someone shaking their head out here in front to say probably, I don't sleep six hours, I sleep eight hours, right? But just sleep faster. So we have 18 hours a day, the average person works around eight to 10 hours. So let's assume it's 10 hours, so we have eight hours left. Then you travel around an hour a day, maybe two hours a day. So now you have still six hours left. So what do you do with the six hours? What do you do with the six hours? Then we eat a little bit, then we schmooze a little bit, talk a little bit to people and all that stuff. But you can see how much time there is available if you organize your day. So you got to work hard. I mean, let me tell you something. When I went to America, I went to college. 
I went and worked out five hours a day and I was working on construction because in those days in bodybuilding there was no money we didn't I didn't have the money for food supplements or anything so I had to go to work so I worked on construction I went to college I worked out in the gym and at night from 8 o'clock at night to 12 midnight I went to acting class four times a week so I did all of that there was not one single minute that I wasted and this is why I'm standing here today what do I need to do to get to where I must get to what must I do today to become the person I must be tomorrow who do I need to become to get to where I must get to? What do I need to do to become who I must become? One of the most powerful questions you can ask yourself every day. Every single time you need to make a decision. What do I want to be proud of tomorrow? Who do I want to be tomorrow? The guy that quit, or the guy that kept going? The guy that took the easy option, or the guy that went all in? The guy that gave in to temptation, or the guy that showed discipline? Discipline, because the hard work I put in today will be worth it tomorrow. The discipline I show today will be worth it for many tomorrows. The strong choices I make today will make me proud for many tomorrows. What must you do today to achieve what you must achieve in your future? What do you need to do to get to where you must get to? What do you need to learn? What do you have to become to get the results you must have? What do you need to master? What new skills must you obtain? You will never get to the next level without mastering the skills that the next level requires. You will not reach any great heights without becoming the person that is capable of reaching those great heights. It's easy to take the easy option. It's easy to rationalize. If no one around you is living at a high level, no one around you is achieving at the highest level, it might seem okay to take it easy. It's easy to get in a big, average, miserable rut. What's not easy is putting in the work when you don't feel like it. What's not easy is continuing to raise the bar when everyone around you remains the same. When that little voice inside you is saying, don't be too great, too ambitious, you won't fit in. What's not easy is having massive dreams and working for them. Because most people don't and most people won't. What's not easy is setting your goals so high, people actually think you're insane. You will not get to the top of the mountain by taking the easy road. It's all uphill. It's a challenge. A challenge that will build strength, pride, courage. A journey that will build character. Build a stronger human being. You will never reach any greater heights by remaining the same. You must rise up, man up. Be willing to put in the work required to reach that level. Be willing to do whatever it takes to become that person. That person you know is inside. What do you want to be remembered for? Who do you want to be tomorrow? Who do you want to be in one year? Five years? Ten years? Who do you want to be hanging around? Who must you become in order to be hanging around those people? Everyone is looking for the magic wand, the elevator to success. There is no elevator. You must take the stairs. You must take one step at a time because each step you take is a new skill. Each step you take is a new strength, new muscle. Each step you take is leading you to a better place. 
if you are given all the results you want right now without working for it, you would not be fulfilled because you didn't earn it. You must earn the success you seek if you want to feel the pride of victory. You want to feel what it feels like to be a champion? Earn it. Become the person that is willing to earn it. Are you prepared to put in the work to become that person? Are you prepared to invest everything you have in order to become that person? Are you prepared to suffer now so you can get to that place in the future? If you are going to get to the top of your own mountain peak, you have to push through the pain. You can't fly up there. You got to trek. You got to go through the pain, the struggle. You will feel like quitting. Most people quit, but you must do this. You must do it for you. Keep pushing forward, and then you will have something most people will never have. Pride from not only knowing that you went after your dream, but you persevered. You showed character. You showed courage. And that sets you apart from the rest. That's what it's all about. It's never about the prize. It's not the money. It's the pride. The pride in knowing you gave every ounce of your soul. The pride in knowing you made you. The pride in knowing you made you great. That's what it's all about. The heart of a champion. What does it take to really truly be a champion? Well, it takes more than excuses. It takes more than just giving yourself a pass. There are only so many champions in the world. And true champions understand what dedication and hard work really is. True champions understand if you're gonna be a lion, you got to know what it means to go through the jungle. You can't pretend or fake it just to make it, to be a champion. When everybody else is sleeping, the champion is the one that wakes up. The champion gets up before the sun comes up. The champion is the one that never lets the sun catch them sleeping. There will become a time when you have to realize that you got to put in the work and you got to understand that if you're going to do it, you better do it with the right attitude. Because attitude is what's going to take to get you to the level that you need to be and beyond it. Champions don't just come overnight. Champions have to grow. Champions have to work. Champions have to dig. Champions have to believe. Champions don't have time to wait around for something to happen on its own. Being a champion takes work, grit, and understanding that if you're trying to be better than the opponent, you got to work a little bit harder than the person that you're up against. Have you ever asked yourself the question, how did I get here? Many times we make subtle decisions that don't seem to be a big deal. But what we often fail to realize is that where you are today is the result of all of the decisions, big and small, that you've made up until this point. The good news is, even if you are not where you want to be right now, you still have a chance to rewrite your script. Yes, it's frustrating when you do not accomplish what you've expected to accomplish within the time frame that you set. Yes, all of us want our journey to be a straight path. But in actuality, your journey will have unexpected stops. It will have curves, it will have hills, it will have valleys, you will have sunny days, you will have rainy days. But you have to decide. If I encounter rejection, if I encounter frustration, if I am disappointed, I will not give up. 
The key is to learn how to separate your feelings from your performance. Yes, some days I don't feel like working. Some days I have to battle with unfair situations. But at the end of the day, I have a decision to make. Either I'm going to have a pity party or I'm going to figure out how to pull myself up. So I say to you today, pull yourself up. Lift up your bow down head. Guess what? Every day I have to choose to pull myself up. There will always be something that you can complain about. There will always be something that you could be worried about. But what I'm challenging you to do is to pursue your goals in spite of what's going on around you. Take a close look at your life, your health, your relationships, your business, your career, and ask yourself a simple question. Have I given my all? If you are not careful, Fear, doubt, and worry will keep you stuck wishing your circumstances were better, but never doing what it takes to improve them. It's time for you to pursue what you really want, not what others want for you, not what others expect from you, but you got to pursue what you really want with everything you've One of the best things you can ever do in your life is to change your words. I said one of the best things you can ever do in your life is change your words. There's a scripture in the Bible in Proverbs that says death and life are in the power of the tongue. In other words, your tongue, your words have the ability to shape your world. I said your words has the ability to shape your world. You can either speak death over your life or you can begin to speak life over who you are. And you've got to get to a place where you stop talking death and start talking life. You got to get to a place where you say, you know what, I got to stop talking about what I don't have and who's not here and what someone didn't give me. I got to stop talking death and I got to start talking life. Your world is a result of words you have spoken. When you look at your life, I promise you there is a connection between the life you live and the words you have spoken. And I challenge you right now, yeah, you got to get to a place where you start speaking what you want to see. You got to say what you want to see. You got to say, I want to be rich. I, I want to be wealthy. I want to build legacy. I want to be healthy. I want to have a good marriage. Matter of fact, just say I am. I, I am blessed. I am favored. I am healed. I am set free. I am victorious. I am an overcomer. I am overcoming these challenges. I am debt free. I am a powerful person. I am a spiritual person. I am a blessed man. I am a blessed woman. You got to speak not what you see, but what you want to see. In this life, there will always be a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, or a team who will face impossible odds. And somehow through some combination of courage, will, grit, and a mustard seed of faith, they'll manage to overcome. What I love about David is that David was not only one of the youngest, the smallest, the least likely. Not only was David underrated, but his weapon of choice was underrated. And there will be times in life where people will not believe in you, neither what you are carrying. I'm gonna tell you the one thing that separated David from Goliath, and that was his heart for God and God's people. If you are going to defeat your giant, you are going to need heart. You must overcome what lies between the pit of your fears and the summit of your knowledge. Our Goliaths, our challenges, our giants oftentimes meet us in our valley places. 
is not on the mountaintop that David fought Goliath, but it's in the valley. I tell you this, the tangible giants in our life are defeated by means that are intangible. If a man can conquer his mindset, if a man can master discipline, then there is nothing he can't win. They will tell you that your dream is too big. They will tell you that your destiny cannot be fulfilled. They will tell you it is impossible to accomplish what you have set out to accomplish. But it's not about what they say, it's about what you say. I believe that you were born to triumph over every demon, over every devil, over every addiction. You are fighting for your family. You are fighting for your legacy. What you are fighting for is bigger than you. Do not forget this. David ran toward the Philistine. David ran towards the army. Your dream, your idea, whatever goal you have, get up and run after it. You can defeat this enemy and you can have your future.